Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the Nashville Stars franchise. The Stars are off to a good start here in season number 5, 34 and 25, heading into the month of June, as our team has really been pretty much kind of on the same pace we were last year. Last year, we finished first in the division after coming back in second place the entire year versus the Toronto Blue Jays. But this year is probably going to be different with the Blue Jays looking a bit different. It will probably be between the Yankees and us. But we take a break in the MLB action to go to the MLB draft. We are picking at number 29. I don't know why we're not picking 30. We won the World Series. But the number one pick was Adam Jackson. He will go to Pittsburgh. He is an 18-year-old starting pitcher out of high school. Pedro Baez was a four-year player, and he is 20 years old. Right fielder going to the Red Sox. And then Chuck Lee is the third pick. He is 18 years old out of Korea going to the Royals. Tim Jones, a third baseman. And then Eric Perez. That is four uh, position players that went in the top five. I haven't seen that many in this series, to be honest. There were about 12 blue chippers, but we weren't in the running for any of them seeing that we have the last pick here. I guess you can say the second to last pick. So we've been pretty good at drafting here in the first round. I'm looking at three guys. Russell Carrer is the first guy. He is interesting out of Oklahoma, 75 potential, 75 overall. It probably won't be what he is going to be, but we'll see. Harvey Lawson is second here, 80 potential, 70 overall. None of these guys are fully, fully scouted, but I really, really like a lot of these guys here. Three catchers, Pablo Ramirez, 19 years old, 65 overall, but 80 potential. But I ultimately decide to go with a college player here in Russell Carur. I'm excited to see what he will bring to the table. I think catcher is a position that you really need to kind of establish in your organization. And we haven't had a cornerstone catcher. We've had really good catchers. So I decide to double up and go with Harvey Lawson in the competitive balance round A. I believe we had that pick because we lost Jorge Alfaro along with Madison Bumgarner. I believe those two warranted that pick. So this is the first year we actually had more than the normal one through six rounds. I decided to draft Adrian Gutierrez in the second round, a starting pitcher who is young. Hopefully he can contribute down the line. I decided to go with an outfielder with this next pick, Alan Matsui, a center fielder who has good potential with his bat, but the fielding is really what brought me to him. He is 21 years old. I think he's going to be a guy that can be a good defensive outfielder. I decided to go with a younger pitcher again in Cosmo Santo in the next round as we move on to the fifth round now. And the catcher who we initially wanted was actually still on the board at this point he got drafted in the fourth round but now in the fifth round i decide to go with another college player here in jack medwick he's out of the dr he played for the university of miami he is 22 years old very well rounded player very good college player he falls all the way to the fifth and i will take him and then in the final round we don't really have too much on any of these players no high potential guys so we're pretty much guessing here i decided to go with a relief pitcher and jared elliott he is 23 years old the one catcher i did pass up on was pablo ramirez he ends up being 19 years old 64 overall in b potential now his bat looks pretty good right out the gate but his defense is kind of bad because his arm is going to never be good. He's probably never going to have going to be playing catcher in his career. So our first pick was Russell Carur and he ends up being only C potential but 74 overall. So he starts out with a very high overall, very good bat. One reason why I selected him first is because of his hitting zones. They were pretty red. Harvey Lawson ends up being higher in potential but lower in overall at 21 years old. Very good bat. I mean, a very, very good bat. Actually, very good on defense, too. He might actually be the better of the two. I guess we'll have to see, though. I don't really know. Both of them actually can hit pretty well. Adrian Gutierrez actually ends up being really good. 18 years old, 85 potential. That is excellent to start it out. Our worst pick was Alan Matsui in the third round. He ends up being only 66 potential. But maybe the surprise pick was here was Cosmo Santo. 19 years old, high B potential, 
62 overall, very comparable to Steven Brennan. That's exactly what Steven Brennan looked like when we drafted him and the first overall pick in this entire series. But maybe our best selection here was Jack Medwick, a center fielder who has good defense and excellent speed right now and an excellent bat. I mean, this you couldn't ask for better here. Jack Medwick was a four-year player. Like I said, play for the University of Miami. He is very, very good. Give him two years. He could be pretty much at 80 overall and be ready for the show. That is very, very interesting. Maybe that could be the future at right field for us as uh, DTW gets older. I guess we'll have to see. So I think we had a very good draft, to be honest with you. Our first two picks were C potential guys, but we made up with it for with B, uh, three B potential guys drafted after that so looking at our team so far i think we're doing pretty well um i think the one hole that we have in our team is really that fifth spot in the rotation i'm just looking at you know prospects who could possibly be moved up damian houston was a guy that is the first year up at the mlb level but you know it hasn't been working out so far we just might have to move him to the bullpen he might not be a starting pitcher to be honest he might be just a relief guy I decide to look at some other bats in our organization, and Justin Faith is a guy that's hitting about 280 this year. I picked up Jacob Amaya in uh, the waiver pickups when going into the regular season. He was being waived by the Dodgers. I decided to waive him myself. I don't see a spot for him. He may be, be he may be 76 overall, but I don't see a fit. So I will move up Justin Faith, and I just need another bench bat. That's all I need. A guy to give you know our middle infielders some rest. So Justin Faith will make his debut. I will mostly highlight him in this game versus the Royals. But I want to talk about a lot of our minor leaguers in this episode. And speaking of minor leaguers, this is the episode to submit your prospects. So make sure you submit down below. The template is in the description, or in the pinned comment, as Justin Faith comes up. And he is one of the subscriber prospects. And he hits one up the middle for his first MLB hit. This could be you. So make sure you guys get your submissions in. He gets his first major league hit here. And I will probably end up changing his batting stance. I believe that's like a generic batting stance. So we'll see what he does here today. One for two with the bases loaded here in the top of the sixth inning. Now Nashville has a three to one lead. Can Faith come through? But an inside fastball. A little late on that swing. It will just be a fly out in the infield. We are on the road playing the Royals, who are also still rebuilding. A lot of teams rebuilding in this series. As Justin Faith comes up to the plate here, one for three. He gets a hold of this pitch, but it's just a fly ball to center field. He caps off a one for four day. We end up losing this game five to three. And Nashville, uh, like I said, we are in a state where we are actually really, really good. I don't mind this loss because obviously we were kind of seeing what Justin Faith can do, getting him some at-bats, and he doesn't disappoint. One for four day isn't bad for your debut. At least he didn't go 0 for 4. So I want to just quick take a look at our number one pick last season, Darren Floyd. Very good player, excellent bat. I loved this pick when we got him because I thought about Willie Adamez and his free agency status going into next season. If we had developed Darren Floyd for two years, he could be the eventual starting shortstop for us. So here he is at the Bowie Bay Sox level, at the AA level. He gets a hold of this pitch, and he gets gives a ride over the fence. It's a home run. A leadoff homer here for Darren Floyd. He does have good speed, so he can hit leadoff. I'm not sure if he will hit that his whole career at the leadoff spot, but he has a really, really good swing. I love his stance. I love his swing. He's hitting about 240 on the year, but he's a guy I can definitely depend on. He comes up here in the top of the eighth inning with bases loaded here, two outs, and he gets a hold of one to the right side. That gets through. It scores one, and it will score two. The number one pick last year comes through with three RBIs today. And he will lift the Bowie Bay Sox to a win here. And just keep an, keep an eye out for that, or ear out, ear out, I should say, for the name Darren Floyd. He definitely has probably a year or two of development. But give him that time and he will be good. 
He will be about 24 years old when he's ready for the show. But I love what I see from him, especially with this swing. He was hitting the ball pretty hard. Two for five day, he gets player of the game. Another guy I want to highlight at the double-A level here is Martin Franco. Now, remember, Martin Franco was our top draft pick two seasons ago. So our first round pick two seasons ago. And at one point, one of you guys pointed out in the comment section that he was actually the number three prospect in baseball. And yes, it was true at that time. He was the number three prospect, and you can see why. He is tough to hit. He kind of reminds me of Josh Hader, how good he was in the minor leagues when he came up. Like he was actually a starting pitcher. He moved to the bullpen, and he's now a lights out closing pitcher. But here he faces Portland, and Portland cannot get a hold of any pitch. I mean, this was the best hit ball we've seen off Martin Franco all day. He's posting below a one whip, below a two ERA. I mean, the guy is just incredible. And this is what you have to do in MLB The Show. Make sure you draft relief pitchers and closing pitchers because then in free agency, when you're developing these guys, you won't have to pay these relief pitchers. You can just develop guys and pretty much have them at a bargain. And we're going to have Martin Franco under cost control for about four seasons. So he gets out of this game here. He pitches two innings. And I like to move my pitchers around. Even though he's a closing pitcher, I like to move him around. He ends up pitching two innings, not giving up any runs or any hits, walking one. And uh, the Bay Sox get the win today. Just a good player that Martin Franco is. I can't wait to see him when he develops into an MLB level talent. I do want to check on our AAA affiliate, and you know who's down there is John Dumont, a guy that we thought was going to probably be the eventual shortstop. I moved him over to second base. It seemed to fit him a little bit better, but he has just not come around with his bat. You can see his numbers at the MLB level. He's never hit above 240 pretty much. And another guy I want to check out here at the double or the AAA level is Nico Latonia. He's been a guy that I have actually been developing Every single season, he's been in the minor leagues. So this is the fifth season he's been in the minors. Still only 22 years old. He started out at 18 years old as a uh, guy from Brazil. But he is a guy that I want to, you know, kind of keep my eye on, especially, you know, coming down the stretch of the season. I don't think we need outfield help, but we'll see. John Dumont gets a leadoff single here to start out this game. I guess he's hitting in that second spot versus Charlotte. But John Dumont is a guy that I hope can develop, but we are paying him $3 million. So that's a lot of money to be at the AAA level. He's got to improve from here. Otherwise, he could be trade bait. Nico Latonia at the plate next. He hits one well to right field. John Dumont was on the run that time, but he will have to go back to first base. But Latonia has an excellent arm in the outfield. That's what he does best. He's hitting about 313. I've been kind of limiting his at-bats here so far this year. I had him at double-A. I moved him up to triple-A, and he has actually been doing pretty well. He's going to hit in that three spot for the triple-A affiliate. Tyson King is also at the triple-A level as well. John Dumont up for his second at-bat here. He hits one to deep left field. That one will just hang up in the air, though. It will just be a fly out to left field. Nico Latonia on deck. He comes up to bat here. 0 for 1 today for the now 22-year-old outfielder. He hits one well to right center. That one will get all the way to the wall. Nico Latonia will have a RBI double here as the runner will round third and head home and will be safe. And Nico comes through with a RBI double. And I like what I see from Latonia so far. He has a taller batting stance. It's actually kind of easier to see pitches along with Dumont. As he comes up here, one for two today. As he gets one over the middle. And John Dumont grooves one to right field. This one's gone. Over the wall in the right center. That's what you like to see from John Dumont. I think if he starts to hit the ball well, he will get called back up. I can't keep calling him up and down, though, because there is an, uh, there is um, a limit on the amount of times you can do that, obviously. But that's a good sign right there. A two for three days so far. Nico Latonia comes up next to the plate. He hits one well to left field. This one's at the wall, and it sneaks over. It's a home run. Back-to-back -back jacks for the Tide. The Norfolk Tides end up with the 4-2 lead here. 
off of back-to-back -back home runs from the two guys we are highlighting here. So a pretty good uh, episode for these two guys. John Dumas comes up and hits one well to center field. That's what you like to see, at least him hitting the ball hard. I just need to see it develop just a little bit more. Maybe he could be a late bloomer like KFC was. Here is Nico back at the plate, though. He's having himself a day, a three-for-four day for Nico Latonia. And he is absolutely hitting the ball extremely well. Is now that brings up John Dumont here in the top of the eighth inning. So they get to bat in the seventh and eighth inning here as Dumont comes up. High fastball, ball four. That brings up Latonia again, three for four today. John Dumont could swipe a bag here as we are down by one. He gets a pitch on the outside half and just smokes it up the middle. Wow, Nico Latonia is very, very impressive as a prospect here. Only C potential. Hasn't really gone up in overall, but, man, the kid can hit the ball. Dumont comes up in the ninth inning, so they have batted in the seventh, eighth, and ninth. But now we are down by three. Nico Latonia is four for five today. He is a triple shy of the cycle, and base is loaded. Down by three, low pitch, and he gets under it. Blake Trinan gets him to fly out in the infield. He had a chance to possibly not walk it off, but give us a at least a tie ball game with a triple with a cycle, but he does not come through. Exciting stuff, though, from our uh, minor league affiliates. You can definitely see the potential in our organization. Th those were just a couple of prospects. We have quite a few prospects who are actually pretty good. Looking at the top prospects in baseball, Martin Franco is sitting here at number 21. He is our only top 50 prospect right now. So he did drop down. He was number, what, six or three earlier, and now he's uh, in the 20s. The top three prospects in baseball, Jacob Ashley, and he is an excellent pitcher, 312 ERA for the Tigers organization. 25 years old, though. He is kind of an older prospect. Jan Jack Van Bergen is the second best prospect in baseball, 24 years old. And he is once again, I mean, another one of these, you know, really good pitching prospects. He's with the Rockies. And then for the Pirates, Drew Jones, who got traded already once in this series. He was drafted by the Twins a long time ago, and now he is with the Pirates. They traded Cabrian Hayes for him at the time. So in this episode, we actually get through a lot of minor league games doing that, and we get through the month of June. It was very, very hot for us in the first couple of weeks, but then we cooled off and we kind of went on a losing streak at the end of the month. And now we are in second place at 50 and 37 behind the Yankees. So the Yankees have taken the lead here, but we actually have one of the best records in the AL and we are ahead in the wild card chase. So we're going to be in a tight battle for the division all year, pretty much. But today I wanted to highlight our minor league affiliates and really get a look at our prospects and see what you guys got with your submissions. Can't wait to see that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rename. Once I get your guys' submissions in, I'm going to rename um, last year's draft prospects, and I will reveal those. It's about five of them, five or six picks that we had last year. And then, obviously, in the offseason, I can rename this year's picks. So I will do that in the offseason as well using those submissions. And then I will also rename about the top 15 picks in the draft, give them a boost in overall so that they can hit the MLB level, level sooner rather than later. Later in the season, I will also highlight um, the best subscriber prospects that you guys have submitted that are at the MLB level now, so you guys can see those. So stay tuned for all of that. But make sure you guys get your submissions in. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Too easy. I've been there, done it, seen it. I saw that. Boy, all that like Kenan. I did that. Still got cracked, they feeling it. Flow still hot like Phoenix. Shine so bright, I'm gleaming. This off top, I'm tweaking. Fresh out the rat like me. And I'm still trying to fight my demons. Cause we all gotta act like Tino. That's why I gotta ride with the Nino. Outside, it's a war going on.